Okay, it looks like it's recording my audio. Um, I should probably do a technical check if it works. Uh, how old? Uh, I'm in 2018.3.14. Okay, so it's not 5.6, so yeah, you're fine. Uh, <laughs> that's actually when this, uh, actually, no, this system, I, re I remade it from scratch when I did it in 5.6, uh, or started it. So yeah, no, this is a, th there's no dependencies on the engine. Yeah, it's, it just says it's a 2019. Yeah, I put it in there because uh, I just typically, want to set things up for people that have the most recent version. It's easy to get the most recent version. But yeah, you can open it up in an old version. You might have some like project setting changes, but whatever. Uh, it's still going to work. Um, I guess what I can do while I wait uh, is kind of demonstrate the idea of what we're doing. Um, let's see. Uh, in the package that I'm going to be uh, showing is, uh, a, or in the in the package th uh, that we have here, what we're going to be creating is the foundation for a universe. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I did that as a demo to somebody. It's got the quack now. Oh my god. Oh uh, no. Where did I put that? Okay. It's, it's, it, it became a meme and I just let it go. I let it ride. Take a seat. Come on. I kind of have to. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh my god. Is that my tester? I didn't hard code anything. That would totally defeat the point. I really hope it's not. It's got to be Unity then. God, I, I hope I didn't like make a package with like a hard coded example. Uh, no. Probably a Unity event, that's why I can't track it. Um, or is it in the animation? Just a, also a bit of a warning I'm on like two, one and a half hours of sleep. So. Oh, there's the sound effects. Yeah, it's, it's on a game object called sound effects. Cool. Um, so basically, it's creating a ro uh, a robust framework for uh, for a health system that you can uh, you can use for a whole but uh, like pretty much any project. This is no nothing in this is going to be hard, would ever be hard coded into the specifics of your of, of your projects. Uh, and I'm going to talk about why we do these kind of engineering principles uh, to build more advanced uh, uh, to. I'm already like losing my words. <laughs> um, yeah, this is this would be basically a very useful tool. It's code that you can pick up and use on pretty much any project. You can just drop it in. It's an asset pack. Uh, and what kind of when we're building these kind of systems, how do we like design it and what we need to have the thinking process each step of the way? So right now it's one about one thirty eight, but I think this is about everyone's that's going to be here. Do you know anyone else who said they'd be here? I think it might be it. Okay. Uh, so uh, if you guys uh, want to pick, uh, want to clone this on your local machine, uh, you can go ahead to this uh, uh, GitHub link. Uh, I can post this in the the Discord to help you guys find it later. Um, okay. Uh, so you guys think we should get started? Yeah? All right, hello everybody. All right, my name is Michael Bull. Uh, I am a, oh crap, I'm already s messing this up. Let me step back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we're gonna be talking about solid system engineering. How to create systems that are robust and extensible and just don't break on you. Things are easier to build on top of. How do we do this? What, kind of, what are the principles involved and what that means for us as we're building something? Uh, what makes me any kind of authority to talk on this kind of thing? Well, my name is Michael Wolf. Um, I, I consider myself, even though I've been in school for the last year, a professional game developer over the last three plus years. I have published over three games. 
Uh, and uh, I've been also the president of BGA. I guess that's not really engineering, uh, engineer stuff, but hey, I've been involved in game development for a very long time. I also have an internship over at MobilityWare, hi Chris. Um, and uh, I was able to actually learn a whole lot there as well. Uh, my contact information is down at the bottom and I can show it to this to you guys again later on or you can just come up and talk to me. Um, so this is a, a quick primer about this. This workshop is not for beginners. I'm going to be assuming that you already know how to make something that works. And when I mean works, as in it does the idea that you're trying to create. Uh, the goal is to teach you how to make things that work better. If you cannot make things that work by themselves, this workshop might not be for you. Uh, I would recommend just focus on getting things that, getting to the point where you can make things that, that work. And then uh, come back and, up and, and look at these principles again later. Um, the, what we're doing here is we're learning how to make, I'm using the word robust, portable, and extensible. And that's going to, and if you've not heard these words before, I'm gonna be talking about them throughout the uh, presentation. So, so what we're going to do here step by step is we're first going to look at what a bad system design looks like. We're going to look at what kind of mess we can get ourselves in. And then we're going to introduce the solid principles. We're gonna talk about, about each one of these. Solid is a, five, is a compound acronym. It's it basically, there's a bunch of, it, it's, it's five different other acronyms all slammed slam together. So uh, we're going to talk about that and then we're gonna come back and look at this bad design and make it work. Uh, it's, we're going to fix it and we're going to just re, uh, and re and apply what we've learned to the same uh, specification we were trying to make. Uh, and again, you can find uh, the repository of the code that we, uh, we create in this, both the bad and the good code on this uh, uh, GitHub repository. Um, so we're gonna start with the bad system design. Uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Uh, nobody here is trying to make bad code. Nobody, I, and I'm not accusing you that your code is bad, it's not evil, it's just not good. Uh, uh, so who here knows why I've got a picture of spaghetti? I'll, I'll pick you. Uh, it's spaghetti, uh, spaghetti code is kind of an acronym. Or spaghetti code, it's not an acronym, but spaghetti code. It's, it's all over the place. Why do we call it spaghetti code? It's 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 code that jumps all over the place. Like, you can't pick up a single piece of spaghetti without picking up all the other spaghetti, right? If you're trying to find one noodle and like just track one spaghetti from one end to the other, uh, you're, you're going to have to dig through a whole bunch of other things. There's a lot of other things tangled in there. Uh, it's not very easy to read uh, a, a, a bowl of spaghetti. It's not easy to straighten a bowl of spaghetti. Um, if you were trying to have straight spaghetti, you would uh, start by not cooking it and scrambling it. Um, so uh, we're going to see how code, oh, how code turns into spaghetti. So this is our game designer. This is somebody who's approached us, we're working for them, or maybe they're, 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 they're a friend, they're on the team, and they're gonna approach you and they say, hey, I need you to program this game for me, okay? Uh, they're going to tell you the requirements. They tell you that we're going to have a player, all right, and he has health and a health bar, and he damages the enemy with a sword, and, you know, and when he dies, uh, the level resets. We're gonna have an enemy, and the enemy, you know, the enemy has health, uh, and it damages the player when it touches them, and on death, whenever, whenever the, the player kills it, it, we're going to add to the score. And lastly, we're gonna have some spikes, we're gonna have some obstacles in this, right? Uh, and in the spikes uh, damage both characters. If the enemy falls into that, they take damage. If the player fall, uh, falls into that, they take damage. Now obviously there's a lot more details here. I'm totally uh, not looking at movement. I'm not looking at uh, any kind of other type of interaction. I'm not looking at scene transitions. Uh, but uh, because if I did do that, then we'd be making an entire game here. Uh, so what we're making, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at a snapshot of a part of, uh, of a game that we're making. All right? So is this kind of like an unfamiliar idea? Like does this, have it, has anyone here made something very similar to this before? And I see like show of hands. Good, that, that's what I was hoping for. As I'm looking for, uh, this is something that should look familiar to you. Now, what I'm also going to show, wow, is that, is that really dark for you guys? Okay, 
So, we're, so I'm so we're, we're so going forward, we're going to a, approach it not as a systems designer. We're going to approach it as some, uh, some perhaps the same way that many of you guys might have already done. So, let's uh, start with the player. We're going to point at one thing and we're going to start choosing that. Right. So uh, I'm going to make the, the 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 player script, and it might look something like this. Oh, I've got a quiz uh, player. Um, Ooh, cool! You guys can see that. So basically, we've got uh, we, we we create a class. We're going to call it player, right? Because that's what I'm working on. You know. Uh, yeah, you can turn that down a bit. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and I'm going to just make a big assumption here and assume that movement is already made here, um, and you already have that working, right? That's the first thing that you did. Um, just a moment here. Plug this in. Oh, I don't have to click on my mouse. Cool. Um, now, uh, now, okay, so what's the next thing? Well, we know that the, the player has a, a sword attack. Right, and so we're going to add that to the player. Remember, guys, I'm, I, I put up here at the top the, the bad design example. I don't want people to walk in here and think that this is how you're supposed to be doing things. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to. I, so this is an example of the approaches that you guys might already be making. Right, so um, so we're going to add this sort of attack. Where do we put it? Well, we just throw it in update. Right. Uh, let's. Ass and I'm going to assume here that you have some sort of thing where the animation happens, right? And we have a flag that says is attacking, right? Um, and cool, that works. And whenever we press, uh, 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 whenever we click, they, they attack. Uh, does this look unfollowable to you guys? No? Okay, okay. so cool. So this shouldn't be unfamiliar. Uh, now the next thing is, uh, well, we have an attack happening. We need to like hit the enemy. So we might make something like this. So we can give the enemy some health. Uh, we can check the, a flag to see if it's dead. And we have like an apply damage function on it that says, well, okay, uh, when like we subtract from its health and if it's zero, we're gonna say that they're dead. And when they're dead, we're gonna do a death animation and we're also gonna add to the score. We've written that code directly inside the place where death happens. And over here, we'd say, uh, uh, Okay, well, if they're take damage, but they're not dead, we're gonna do a take damage animation. Um, okay, well, it's cool. We've got a way to deal damage to them. Uh, we need something to do that. So maybe we'll make a, hey, I know how to break things into other classes. I'm gonna make a player sword one, right? Uh, and this player sword says on collision enter. Uh, I realized later that this should have been on collision enter 2D because this is a 2D example. Uh, but, and don't worry, that's fixed in the repository. Uh, and we're going to check to see, hey, if, uh, if the tag is an enemy, we're going to find the enemy object on the thing we collided with, and then we're going to call apply damage. Cool. This is, again, like stuff that you guys probably have seen before or can follow pretty easily. Now, throughout this process, we're just adding on. We're just adding and adding and adding, right? Uh, okay, so we're pretty far. We have the player can deal damage to them. Uh, let's say, let's look at the enemy. Uh, well, the enemy, well, we already have our apply damage function, but okay, well, when it collides, oh, sorry, didn't mean to hit you guys in the eye there. When it, uh, when it collides with the player, deal damage to the player script, right? Okay, we just saw that. That makes sense. Um, all right. And let's see, uh, oh, if it's dealing damage to the player, we probably have to make apply damage again. So let's just copy paste the code, all right? You guys, some of you guys are laughing. If you're copying and pasting code, you're probably doing something wrong. Uh, it, or you should at least check. <laughs> uh, and so uh, we're gonna have apply damage to the same kind of logic, but instead of adding score, we're going to restart the level when the player dies. And Leia, let's just copy and paste all those animation uh, uh, scripts as well. Why not? And then, oh, when we're also going to update the health bar, and we're going to assume that we already have a system here where that the, perhaps the, the health bar is directly referenced here in the player script for whatever reason. And we say fill image. The, you guys seen fill, ima fill image before? Mm -hmm. Whatever. It's a, fu it's a function that visually changes this, okay? <laughs> cool. All right. We're jamming away. It's, this is like a game jam. I'm loving it. I'm having a good time. I'm eating snacks. 
Uh, all right, cool. Uh, so now the player can deal damage, the enemy can deal damage, they both, they, that's working out. Um, I already made movement at the beginning. Uh, so, oh, we now we've got to think about some damage spikes. I want you guys to pay attention to this slide because I'm going to bring it up later. Uh, so we're going to make a class called damage spikes, sure. Uh, we're going to do damage value. Uh, and then we're going to, and yeah, different spikes might do different amount of damage. Cool. If the tag is player, deal damage to the player script. If the tag is enemy, deal damage to the enemy. Oh, this is an updated. This is supposed to say player. I changed the name of the classes. Sorry. But yeah, deal damage to player, deal damage to enemy. And kind of all of that. Uh, it's kind of, uh, now, the, the, the engineer in me is, is kind of gagging right now because I know what this means. Uh, so who here knows why this might be a problem? I'm going to start with you. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about that when we, uh, in, in the principles, but yeah, so I might be getting ahead of myself, but, saying, but basically, this, if you're seeing this kind of thing, it's also a really bad sign. All right, we did it. All right, we've gotten, uh, we, we, we hit all of our design requirements. The game functions exactly as re re uh, requested by a game designer. All right, hello Sak Sakurai. Great job on that prototype. Now, I need you to do something. So now um, we need to do a little bit more. Uh, I need you to add uh, another enemy, but this is a different type of enemy and they use a sword instead. And I need you to add a destructible crate. When anything deals damage to it, it's going to, uh, it needs to explode. Um, should be pretty simple, right? You've got an hour. Oh. Uh, all right, well, what, what will it take? What do you guys think it will take? Given our current system that we have, what do we have to do to make a second type of enemy? To modify what we already have. To modify, but we also need to have the other enemy. Yeah. We need yeah, to have three new classes and make a new enemy class. You need to make a new enemy class, <laughs> right? Uh, right? Uh, but, but to be said though, we can't use any of, our, any of the code that we currently have. It's not helpful for us at all. Even though we already just did this, we can't use it. We can't do anything with it. Um, it's, it, it, it's as if we're starting from scratch. And also, uh, each new feature needs a completely new class. Uh, and it's, yeah, you said, you, yeah, the, the enemy has a sword, so we're gonna need an enemy sword class, aren't we? Uh, and uh, all existing classes needs to be updated to account for each new class. Remember the slide, the damage spikes? We're gonna need to add like an enemy health two, or enemy two, right? It's going, and, and, and every time we add a variance to this, it's going to need to be changed. It means that all of the code that, not only do we have to do the work of creating all these new features, but we also have to change everything we already made before to handle them, right? That sounds exhausting. That is very tiring. Look at that, like we have, this is kind of like a map of what we've been work, of what we have to do here might look a bit like spaghetti. So, what would you do? Would you just do would you do it an hour? Um, what? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, none of that. We're not having any of that. Let's just start from scratch. Let's just re-analyze this and like let's look at some solid principles into their design. Look at how we can make it so we don't have to deal with this nonsense. So what are solid principles? Well, first, overall, like just broad view of it, they prevent the spaghetti code. They make code easier to read, debug, and manage, and it makes your code like overall more usable. Um, and it, it lets your code be easy to like just build on top of. Like you're basically, you're, you're making like Lego blocks that you can assemble in different ways, and you can, uh, and you can extend 
and just easily create new types of behavior and, uh, on top of it. Uh, and it solves some uh, dependency issues. So like having things that are closely like linked together, it lets you be able to pick up and make the code portable and put it into a new project if you want. So here is solid. The, uh, so these are the five solid principles. The first, the most important one is the single responsibility principle. You've got the open closed principle, this, I'm doing overview, I'm gonna go into details in a moment. Uh, the Liskov substitution principle, that's, that's a mouthful. Interface segregation and dependency inversion. Uh, the, if you look it up on Wikipedia, this stuff, you're going to see some, de some definitions that are kind of just like, what, huh? Mm -hmm. This is really weird to read. For, uh, the SRP is not that hard to understand though. A class should only have a single responsibility. I'm gonna put all of these into more plain terms to help you understand. Basically, each class should have one job. If, you try, if, if, if somebody asks you, what does this class do? If you have to count on your fingers what it does, you've got, well, no. If you actually have to, if, if it, you have a list of more than one thing, generally, then, you, then it's probably not following SRP. Now, it's, it's okay sometimes. I'm, God, I, I feel weird saying this, especially if it's a person. Though. <laughs> but sometimes it can do more than one thing, but only if they're really closely tied together. But generally, it's a good idea to make a new class, for, uh, to have a separate class for each uh, responsibility that you need to be managing. It has more than one job separated. This is the most important principle. If you take nothing else out of this workshop uh, today, uh, take this home. Just make, like, think about single responsibility principle with your design. Uh, we can take what we currently have. We have this, the player class that we made before. We can break that up into the movement control that we had, right? We can make and make a different class for the health. All right, that's pretty straightforward. Just take all of the code from earlier before and move them into two different scripts. I don't have an image for this, but does it make sense for you guys, right? Okay. The second one is the open closed principle. Software entities should be open for extension, but closed for modification. Well, what does that mean? Well, to, you don't need to modify the source code of a class just to extend its behavior. Can anyone put this in any other words? Does it, can anyone else have an idea of what this means? Sorry, the, the question is, does this, is anyone not getting this when I'm saying this? Yeah? So is what you're saying that Or that extends it, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or inherits from from your first one. <laughs> you know, yeah, inheritance. <laughs> so instead of instead, yeah, extend behavior. You can either use derived classes. So basically, let's pretend we have a health manager base class, right? That just handles health in general, and then we can pretend that player health is a specific implementation of of health. Uh, of a health manager. Uh, I'm going to, you know what, I'm gonna just step back a bunch of slides here. Boy, I'm gonna have to click through a lot of things. Um, so, so here, remember in the player uh, health, we had like the death animation and the restart level and all of these things that happen here in this function. Well, we could take those things and maybe make that into the, uh, uh, say that we were uh, extending it uh, we basically override this function, apply damage for our specific implementation. That's one approach. Now another approach that, I, that I'm a fan of, that, that I am a much bi uh, a bigger fan of is using events or, uh, and, and there's this concept called event-driven architecture, which is using events to extend your behavior. Uh, for basically here in depth, and we're gonna see an example of this later on, but in depth there would be an event for do something on depth uh, or on depth event. And then we have other things, other classes get to define what happens when that event is raised. All right, gotta step back a word. Uh, yep, yeah, okay. Oops, and here we go. Um, I'm going to define it here in this form of UML. I know it's not like the most formal way, but it gets the idea across. But there'll be other classes that simply just have the definitions of what is happening when on death happens or when on take damage. Here I have damage animations for on-take damage and restart on death. It's okay to have a class that says 
restart on death. And that's what it does. It says that when uh, death happens, restart the level. That's a single responsibility. So, uh, and we're going to see how to implement events and our examples later on. Uh, the third one, am I counting right? Yeah, is the Liskov substitution principle. Objects should be replaceable with instances of their subtypes. That's, that's me paraphrasing Wikipedia. It's a much longer definition online. Uh, but basically what this means is just use polymorphism. Like take advantage of base classes and interfaces. You want, uh, you, you want, like if I wanted to, remember we had that damage collider? Well, if it talks to the base cla class of a generic health manager, then it only needs to, it doesn't need to worry about the conditions for all of them, right? All it needs to do is say, hey, like I'm gonna deal damage to a health manager if I, if, if, if I, if I contact one. And we can talk about filtering, make sure that you don't have friendly fire and stuff later. But the basic idea is that this is gonna deal damage to, a, 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 to anything that has health. By, and with the Liskov substitution principle, it shouldn't ever be wrong if damage collider talks to player health or versus enemy health. Both of these should be functionally correct. That makes sense so far, guys? I'm just lecturing here. I know I'm not so super in engagement. We're gonna get through these and we're going to then, I'm going to apply all of these to the, uh, to the design. We'll see how we make that work. So the uh, fourth is the interface segregation principle. Many client-specific interfaces are better than a general purpose interface. More aptly, I'd say, uh, or at least how I interpret it, is it just more, the more abstraction, the better. If can basically break up interfaces into multiple interfaces uh, and have more forms of abstraction than when things connect to them. Like, uh, the things don't need to have to worry about the specifications of the other interfaces. So an example I'm going to show here, is sadly I don't have this in our, in the example that we're gonna show later because it'd be too much extra uh, stuff. But I do have on in the in the full repository of the system is an idea of a meterable interface. Uh, I, it's something that can that can be interpreted and put onto a meter, something that fills from zero to one. We so if I if I have a health meter, then and then something then, then a meter can look at that and say, hey, let, let's say it's like get. It could have a function called just get percent value, and that's all it looks at. If you separate the meterable interface from the damageable interface, which would be just have apply damage on it, then, then that means that the meter system will never have a dependency or have to worry about what's going on in the damage system. I feel like I kind of jumped ahead. Are, is, are people unfamiliar with interfaces in this room? Okay, okay sorry. Uh, so far I'm making sense. Is this nonsense for you guys? Okay. So uh, the takeaway is uh, the more abstraction, the better. And uh, then lastly, we have this thing called the dependency inversion principle. One should depend on abstractions, not concretions. This basically means kind of the same thing, use polymorphism and take advantage of uh, base classes. But more specifically, don't have if you like look at your abstract implementations or your interfaces and things that systems that connect together should try to connect at that interface level if they can, or at the very least looking at a, the, the base of an abstract class. Uh, the more concrete something is, that means it's more specific and more high level of an implementation. And that means that that, that is more likely to change. That's more likely to be volatile or, and, or there could be just other potential problems with the concrete implementation. So basically just connect to the mo more abstract form. <sighs> mouthfuls, lots of mouthfuls. I just showed you guys what all these principles are. We're gonna see them in practice. So we're going to look at a solid system design. Rather than a plate of spaghetti, we're gonna have whatever this pillar thing is. So let's put it into practice. Um, so, hey, are you ready to try again? Okay, so here again, here's your prompt. You've got, again, the player, they have health and a health bar. They've got, they can damage the enemy with a sword. 
On death, they, they'll reset the level. I've, we've already seen all of this. The enemy has health, damages the player on contact, and on death adds to the score. Uh, and then we've got the spikes, and they damage both characters. Yeah? Yeah, and what's interesting to note, though, is if we're not thinking about this at all, uh, thinking about this architecture, is we had the same exact slide way back up there, and this is how we approach it. We approach it looking at the player and the enemy, and basically these were our classes because we weren't thinking about design. But if you look at the details, this one has health. This one also has health. Yeah. And this, this is the ways in which this can spread out and branch out. And, this, and damage is part of health, so we're going to make a health system. So beforehand, we started at the player. Who here has a guess where, where we might want to start? Oh, that's right. Oh, that's crap. I, that's not the next slide. OK. Uh, forget I just said that last thing. <laughs> so we're looking at this. This might be an example of a UML class design that we might make for, uh, make for this. Um, it, basically, we have this iDamageable interface. The damage collider will talk to the iDamageable. Remember, we've got that dependency version got interface segregation, right? So all the damage player needs to know how to do is apply damage. So we'll just talk directly to anything the, uh, uh, with I damageable. It should not have anywhere in that class any kind of dependency, any kind of uh, instance of the word health manager in there. Damage players can just deal damage to things that can, can, uh, that can have damage be dealt to them. It's, it's, it sounds really obvious, but it does take that extra thought to understand where your abstract ideas are. Um, we can make a damageable base class. They're uh, basically just a generic like uh, mono behavior that is uh, that implements I damageable. Um, th there is utility in this, which I'll have to show in a moment. But uh, if if you want, you can just go directly from I damageable to health manager, and it would it, it still is the same idea. Though remember, we can the more abstraction, the better. So it's okay to have a, a damageable base class that implements your interface, as long as you have use for it. Um, I, should, I should mention is that like uh, there's a, such a thing as over-engineering. Um, and uh, I'm showing you guys all of this kind of this stuff to show you what it would mean to try to engineer at, at a higher level. But if your use case, if your project is never going to have to use more than one health thing, well, I can't imagine it would, but you, you, know, you don't need to over-engineer a project you're making a lot more work for yourself but I think it's a good practice, especially as students, for us to practice this and then learn how to tune what, when we should do what. Um, I've also created a thing here where basically you'll have a bunch of classes that will subscribe to Health Manager for the on death, on animation event. So there's gonna be a whole bunch of, uh, on death, on take damage, we're gonna have animations, reset on death, add score, maybe a whole bunch of other things. So it might be useful to have a, a abstract implementation of something that subscribes to the health manager events. And then you could have everything else extend from there. So uh, we're going to start with interfaces. That's what I meant earlier with the slide I was describing. Uh, to just start out with your interface, then this then it's going to be a, uh, you, you know exactly where, where your bedrock is, I guess. It's where kind of things need to be extended to. Now sometimes, sometimes you could approach it from a different angle, it's kind of like preferences. Uh, you could start with your class and then add, like extract an interface from it, but I think it's a good idea to start with an interface if you can. Uh, the interface has basically two, uh, two things. One, uh, it has the apply damage. Second, it has something called an on, uh, it has a, the on take damage event. It's something that happens when it take damage happens. So some of you guys might be completely unfamiliar with the event handler paradigm that I might be demonstrating here. So uh, who here uh, can tell me, can anyone here tell me what this public delegate void means? Yes, Brendan? Basically, it's like a template for a function, right? We're defining like a template. So this is literally any kind of function that returns void and passes in an object, like a generic object. It's 
like uh, it could be actually anything, and then and then a float for the amount of damage. The using object sender is common in the event handler uh, uh, paradigm because it lets the the thing that receives the event at the end to know where it initially came from, where the where the propagation source was. Basically, whatever invoked the uh, uh, apply damage. And over here, we have we can have a variable that's essentially um, of, of the type of our delegate, and that says, okay, so here's a a a, a function template. We need like a met a method that fits that template, and we're going to call it on take damage. Over here, I've used uh, a getter uh, a property here in this interface uh, because it's actually really convenient. It it, it you can treat it like um, basically like a variable. Uh, if you're very unfamiliar with events entirely, this might be a bit of a, uh, a, like, a bit confusing. Um, come and talk to me after. I don't, I don't want to spend too much time explaining the syntax. Um, so far, though, like, are people following? This sounds really weird, right? Where's the player? Huh? Like, we're, we're, not, we're not coding the player, right? We're just doing this. This doesn't mean anything. Not yet. Uh, okay, so we have the I damage rule. Let's look at what can a call be applied damage on the interface. Uh, so we can use actually a git component to looking at an interface. And it will look at each, uh, so git component, you know, looks at a game object and looks at the components on it, right? We can use git component to look for any, any mono behavior that implements I damageable, okay? Yeah, it's really, it's super helpful. And if it's not null, then that means we found it. And then we're going to just call apply damage. Apply damage, remember, it's object sender. This, the class, the, the damage collider, is going to be the, uh, the sender. And the value is going to be this value we defined up here. This is a serialized value, so we can change it in the inspector. So something really cool about doing what we just did is that now the sword, the spikes, and a, the, the, the part of the enemy that deals damage, they just need to use the damage collider class. We don't need to rewrite on collision enter to uh, more, <laughs> uh, more, than, uh, more than once. We, in fact, we kind of don't need to write it again as far as the, this health system goes, or at least this specification. Although if there are other things that do, do damage, like shooting a, a, like a gun or ray cap or clicking on something, we can have other functions that call apply damage. But as far as what we have here, all three of these are handled. We don't need to worry about, uh, uh, about that part of the code ever again. And anything else that behaves similarly also doesn't need to worry about it again. Now, I am kind of, I don't know, gaslighting you or something here, because I'm totally like neglecting the filtering part of this. And I'm not showing you guys that part here because it would be a lot of extra time. But if you want to find out more about how to use this, the same paradigm to also filter by like player or enemy and stuff like that, uh, you can look at the code on the repository. Uh, so far, so good? Okay. Uh, so what that might look like is essentially here we've got the sword, right? And the spikes, and they basically look exactly the same. They're just an object that when it touches something does this. Pretty sweet. We can also set variables in the inspector how much damage this collider does, et cetera. It's really useful, and we can keep like extending that in any way we want. Uh, and this is, I think, pretty solid. So <laughs> oh, I did not mean that. <laughs> uh, all right, well, sweet. That's why, uh, all right. I, I feel like the Liscott says the future principle, they just like made up a guy's name just so they could have the L. Um, <laughs> So let's look at a building out towards a health manager. Here I've made a, 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 an abstract implementation of the damageable base class. Uh, this is basically something that implements iDamageable, meaning that it needs to have a, a, a property for on-take uh, on damage. Um, and I prefer to make, this is just a thing I kind of like to do. It's a pattern where there's like kind of a hidden variable here that's accessed through the property that has a default initializer. I think there's a new thing in C-sharp meaning that you don't have to declare two things, but um, in like 4.0. 
But essentially what this does is that anything that wants to look at the on kick damage event will can, can call on kick damage with a capital O, and they're actually se act secretly accessing the one with the lowercase, or with the underscore. Um, it's just, it's kind of, it's a nice little useful paradigm right here. Um, and then this damageable base still only abstractly implements apply damage, um, it, because there are different things are going to respond to damage in different ways. So one of those is going to be our health manager. Our health manager implements damageable base. This is actually where we're going to be tracking a health value uh, and whether something is dead, and it's going to have, uh, I'm gonna talk about the event in a moment, and then apply damage. So it's gonna override, it's gonna actually make the concrete implementation of apply damage. This looks exactly like what we did before, but instead of adding every little thing directly into the code here, we just kind of represent that abstractly with the on death event and on tick damage event. Uh, these are essentially things that can, uh, they're like, any kind of specific implementation of what happens when damage happens can be uh, can basically be defined elsewhere and added to this. What that means is that health manager here doesn't need to change for anything specific. This this is the open close principle. This this specific uh, feature of things have things exist and they have health and they can die is uh, kind of done at this point. Now, there might be, you know, uh, some unforeseen cases where it makes sense, but for the most part, this this part of the code is closed. Um, does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're going to look at something that will connect to a health manager and define what exactly happens when damage happens. And this is a, a handy tool. A, 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 this is going to be the. <coughs> Health Manager Event Subscriber Base. Uh, very long name. Uh, I'm a fan of long names because they say exactly what they mean, uh, and that's okay to have a lot of classes and long, things with long names, as long as they're following solid principles. Um, so what this one does is essentially it has, an, it, it, it has a reference to a health manager. It's gonna call owner, and when it, it on enable and disable, it will, uh, it will th this, this syntax right here, uh, I could zoom in for you guys. Oh, no? All right. Um, but basically, the um, on-take damage, uh, we can basically append this on-take damage implementation of whatever this thing is, the code inside of this, uh, a, a, an, a, uh, any class that derives from this base class, uh, can be added, appended to the take damage event or death event. I'm talking about this for a long time. I'm feeling like you guys are getting this. But essentially, though, this rule can be dynamically allocated. An example of something that implements health manager event subscriber base would be the damage event animations. This will reference the animator. This will say, like, well, what's the, like, trigger? Or actually, I call that trigger, but it really should be state name. Um, but basically say, like, what is the state I'm going to animate when, uh, I, I, uh, when I take damage? What is the state I'm going to animate when I, when I die? And all you got to do is just implement the uh, abstract classes. If, when you're writing this code, it will, uh, IntelliSense will usually like give you a little shortcut that you can click on and it'll uh, after you write health manager event subscriber base, and then it will fill out this for you. It'll just, boom. It takes like a, it takes like a minute to, 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 to write this right here. And you also know that this is, for all intents and purposes, correct. It's not, go th there's no complication in this. This is just something that gets appended on, just gets added to the existing system. It means that you can look back at the, the health manager system and the fact that you have the animations will not change how, how health is managed or, or calculated. Um, it, you won't have weird bugs due to those two different systems being connected. So what does this look like when you're actually putting it together in Unity? Well, um, over here, uh, here is the, the, the player. Remember, we, we need to actually meet our users. We made this, the, the basic, uh, we, we have our design. We're going to meet that design using the, the, what we engineered. So we've got the player controller. We're going to say that that's like the movement. We're, then we have our health manager. 
is that, and we have two classes, one that says restart on depth. It just says restart the level right here in, in a different class. And then we have damage animations, which is here on the previous slide. This is, this is the player. It's, it's four components, but it does exactly what we could do. And if we wanted, and if the design suddenly changed, it says, okay, wait, we don't want to animate when we die for some reason. You could just remove that. You don't need to change your code. And you can also have other things elsewhere still animate when they die, and it will work accordingly. You guys can see that the way that, that behavior, by appending behavior with events, you can basically have any kind of permutation of what happens just be added through a set of components. Okay. The enemy is the exact same thing, except we're gonna add a damage collider on it. Sure, like it does, it, it, it's the exact thing, except we have add score on depth, and uh, yeah. Okay, that's pretty nice. We don't need to make an enemy class. class. So we're gonna assume that we have like an enemy controller. Oh, I, I have the word player controller here, whoops. But an enemy controller, that, that handles the movement, sure. That's something else that we can work on uh, somewhere else. The, oh, did I miss the spikes? Oh yeah, the spikes were, the spikes and the sword and everything were all handled like way early on when we made the damage collider. We've got everything that we wanted, we're done. Well, <laughs> okay, okay, wait, wait, what about the design changes? How do we handle those design changes? Okay, um, well, all right, so brace ourselves. We need to handle enemy two indestructible crate, okay? We need to add that to our system. Well, okay, so enemy two is basically like the same thing, except we just also have like the sword part which is just a collider, and we could say that we have like the, the, the enemy controller. You can make, the only change we really need to do is make the, like the AI unit, right? And the AI unit can say to play an animation that turns on the sword, and then the sword can deal damage. But we actually, that's the only code, new code we're writing, and that's pretty admissible. That's like, okay, this behaves differently, so we'll write that differently. But we don't need to make an entire, we don't need to worry about its health, we don't need to worry about how other things look at it. Uh, no, uh, the, the fact that enemy two exists doesn't mean that damage collider needs to now account for it. It already does by using abstraction. So, okay, that's pretty sweet. I, that that can be done in maybe like uh, you know a few minutes, uh, or maybe like depends on how complicated the AI is. Right, it could be an hour. But now the destructible crate. Well, let's see. It's well, you can pretend that it has health. And you can add a destructible object thing that appends to taking damage or, or, or death, and then on take damage, destroy it. Or just you know call a function that spawns particle effects and stuff. But wait, you're done. That, that's, that's it, we, we already did well, everything. That took like no time at all. And nothing else you, is going to break anymore. And everything doesn't, nothing changes just because we've added or changed our functionality. Uh, and you could also do this with a lot of things. Uh, one thing I was gonna add in here was a button that only turns something on, or like a, that opens a door that only works when the player hits it with their sword. Do you guys, can you guys imagine how we might make that? Do you have any ideas? Hmm? Same way as the crate, really? Same way as the crate, actually, yeah. We, we uh, basically just put the, like, on take damage, turn on, like, open the door. It's pretty sweet, it's pretty straightforward. Nothing needs to change, and the player code doesn't need to really change. All we gotta do is worry about making the door open. Hey, that's, that's, that's pretty sweet. So, yeah, I, yeah, we did it, <laughs> yeah, that's it. So that is the entire duration of the, I love how it loops. Uh, <laughs> that is the entire uh, duration of the, uh, 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 that's our entire workshop. Um, I'm gonna be opening it up to questions and we can actually get into some nitty gritty. And I'm actually, I can also pull up to show some of this code in action. Um, I was going to stop to show that, but I think it's easier to just get through it and show later. Here is the damage core asset back. Now if you go to the repository under the releases, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a free version of my uh, damage core asset pack. Hopefully you guys will see Damage Core on the Asset Store by the end of the summer. I'm gonna be working on it part-time. 
Uh, and basically, the idea is to make an asset package where you can just download, you can have your entire health system ready for you, you don't need to even write it. But you guys can connect to it and extend it in your own ways, and this is all already done for you. Um, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, you download it. Uh, you can take pictures of this slide if you want to take pictures. All right. Okay. Questions? Is this copyrighted? <laughs> no. No, it's MIT license. No, it means it's not. Um, you can turn on the lights if you want. All right. Yeah. <laughs> One second. Yeah, so basically I just showed you guys the, my, my, my secret sauce behind my asset pack, right? Basically that's the basic idea of it. However, mine's very developed, as in it, uh, I, I do this thing where instead of passing, like for example, instead of passing, uh, here is my damage system core, uh, I pass a struct, like this gets really, really complicated. So. Yeah, you're hoping that you'd, you'd see that, right? So instead of, uh, my delegate actually uses damage event arguments, and basically it's a struct that holds a whole bunch of information. In fact, we can actually pass event arguments with the point in space in which we were hit. And that means that we could have something respond to taking damage and play a particle effect where we were hit, right? So you can see how this can become actually very, very sophisticated and uh, is, I think, pretty new. <laughs> other question? There's another one. What's the particle size? Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's a, you can define a class in multiple files. Uh, yeah, that's not normally a good idea. This very usually you'll see you'll see part you'll see partial class um, in some uh, you'll see partial class in in some code bases usually down at the like the deepest level because there's a lot going on. Base classes can grow, but only if it's like well thought out. It's not like specific functionality. It's just like here's more things that at the base level our system can do. So uh, I've got damage here being def uh, having multiple definitions. Here I have damage again, uh, and then I've got like damage types. So basically, I can have my event or my damage event argument say that this is a damage over time effect. This is a heal. This is a. a which is a regular hit, and I was going to add AOE and some other stuff. Um, in my demos that you guys can download and use, um, where's my scenes? I've got my works in progress, I've got my dots. Um, oh, this is, oh, I didn't change my text. So basically, I've got a, 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 a damage over time system. I've got like poison that does things at a different rate. I think I've got one that's like, doubles all damage you take, so it's like a curse. Um, I've got some really complex stuff. I've also got stuff with like armor and shields and uh, really like wild things. It can be things, it's called a mutator pattern where instead of things that subscribe to an event, they change how an event is interpreted. <laughs> it gets weird. So that's why things can get a, a really complicated in my, my full asset, but the exact same principles are at play all over the place, this is just meant to be universal and used in a whole bunch of different possible systems. What's that? How does the having lots of different classes in the drug future affect the like, uh, running of the system? It's exactly the same kind of runtime. Uh, the only difference you might see is compile time in, this, in, in something like C++. In C Sharp, it's negligible. So having more objects that are, imagine like, imagine a train versus a really big wheel. No, that's not really good. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, so like, imagine something like uh, having a whole bunch of moving parts, it doesn't really change how much metal there is in it. Having, oh God, this is bad. Uh, like a transformer's car versus a regular car. This is no good analogy. Uh, <laughs> but no, it, they're, 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 I think p different, you, you'll hear different people argue different things about, uh, about that, I, I think people who are really, um, like, I, I guess you could say like, runtime junkies uh, will like tell you it's like you're getting like a .0001 because you have this abstract class here. 
like increase. Like, no, <laughs> it's better. And do you know what you're saving? You're saving your own time, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> don't put everything in update, guys. It's time to stop doing that. Uh, uh, and it was missing a collider. Hmm? You were missing a collider. <laughs> no. No, it was, it was at the top. It was, it was collapsed. Oh, you're just trying to nitpick me? A little bit. Other questions, guys? Yes, and they can contain, and they, like, they, imagine, ima let's, in C Sharp, you can pretend that an event is like, like an array of function calls, right? Uh, one of the wackiest things you learn in CS is um, the, uh, is, is when, once you start realizing that methods are variables, they're always, they've always been, you just didn't know. Uh, <laughs> and when you ever say you plus equals, you can imagine like each instruction is being added to the other thing. Um, and then when you subtract it, you're removing those from it. Uh, the language does a lot for us. Uh, it's really complicated. You gotta use, in C++, you gotta use a library, but C Sharp's beautiful, best language, so. <laughs> So yeah, a delegate, uh, let's see, let's look at it in the health system. So you'll see in the code um, that I do, so you'll see that I've got the scripts here, right? You'll see Michael Wolf Games, that's my company, soon to be company. And you have the bad example, which has our bad code, and then we have our health system, no! <laughs> oh no, I did this, I did this at 3 a.m. last night, shut up. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, crap. That's what we search on the Oh, it's health system? <laughs> uh, so you'll see that, let's see, um, in my eye damageable interface here, um, oops, um, the, the delegate here is um, basically, you can just imagine void any function that takes in these parameters, right? So uh, it's, it, you basically are defining a template it's like, a, it's like a type for a method, right? So remember we said methods are variables? Delegates are the types for those variables, okay? And, and those are defined by what it returns and what it takes in, right? Imagine like it's like an input-output machine, right? So we have to say a damage event handler is something that takes in an object, which if you're familiar, you learned this in Java very quickly, you don't see that much in C Sharp, um, is uh, that object is basically Literally anything that isn't a, like a float or int, anything that's like a class, right? It can uh, can be a sender, uh, or sorry, it could be an object type, and so you can pass anything into this, and then it can be unpacked on on the other side. Um, for example, you can say that like, uh, say you have like an RPG system where you've got a very unique case where uh, the actually like maybe like think like maybe Pokemon. I think there might be a case where if, uh, if they would die, but it came from one certain type of move, then they won't die because they're ball got a, huh, hmm, ball swipe. Yeah, or, but basically this specific Pokemon won't die to one specific move. And you can basically check the sender, unpack it, see if it's from that type of thing, and then like, oh, okay. So it's just really nice for condition checking. Yeah, so yeah, so basically this is pretend that this is just a variable. All right. The, the 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 get set is a property. So this is a variable that is like um uh th that you can access. And when we actually like implement it in damageable base, uh you're saying you're saying that the get function actually returns this is an actual variable, an actual thing that you can manipulate or that's actually being manipulated, right? Um, but everything else is just accessing it through this. Just pretend it's like an alias. It's just like. Yeah. 
Um, and then uh, you can see like this is like equals value because you're actually kind of when we say plus equals to a delegate or to a, to an event, uh, we're saying like uh, it's like it's going to equal what it currently is plus these extra instructions being I don't know reset the scene or something. And then also one last thing on that is that also there it, in, by default under under the system uh, library up here. Um, you'll see, I just realized that none of the lights are on, it's really just what I'm doing. But um, the action right here is a common uh, delegate type for vo returns void and takes in no parameters. So it's just a thing that does a thing. Oh, so action is just one of the delegate types, but you can define these as the delegates. Because I've used action before, but I didn't know about delegates. Oh yeah, if you know about actions, the delegates are exactly, they're just the same thing you define differently. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So Yeah. How did you make that jump? How did I make the jump from using uh, like polymorphism, extension like extension? Oh, so b back on like, what was it? Uh, open closed or, yeah. Uh, basically the, uh, it, it's come from a lot of iteration. So the health system that I have here has, I've worked on on like eight projects so far. I started it a long time ago. Um, well, see what, was, how it started off is that it is, some of you guys know Jason Weinman on YouTube, and some of you know him personally. Uh, basically, I had a project with him when I was working over at Silicon Storm, and uh, he, yeah, his company was like contracting mine, and he was doing code review on mine. Uh, and then he's like, I'm trying to make something work. And he looks at my code, and it's like 3,000 lines. And it's like, why is, there, why is this script 3,000 lines? And then he's, he points at it, he's like, has anyone ever told you how to like actually like design? And it's like, what? <laughs> like it works. <laughs> what's your, what do you? What's your problem? It works. And then it, and then he basically like sits me down. He like he he calls my boss and asks like, hey, can I just take his work day to like improve him on this? And my boss was like, yes, please make him stop doing that. And so <laughs> and so basically, uh, and then he just sat sat down with me over Skype and just said like, okay, this like like you're going to just listen to what I tell you to do. You're going to like make a new class to put all of this in, right? Start separating, so I like learned like these basic ideas. And then I just saw how immediately like the, the next task in front of me was like super easy to do, right? I was able to build on top of what, what I refactored. And then it's like, okay, and I started applying these places. And I slowly started doing this, started on like this health, health system on a project that is now de de defunct, but I just kept picking up the, the, the code and putting it somewhere else. There was one point where it got, everything got hard coded into this one project and I realized because I'm not separating my dependencies, right? I'm like, I'm hard coding uh, the animations in the, in the take damage. I need to stop doing that, let's use events. It really, there was a point where I tried to pick up the code, the health system that I worked on for months and months, try to put it onto a new project, but when I tried to take it out, it's like pulling a weed out of a garden, but the entire garden comes up with it. Because it's like, oh, this is talking to like this other system, and this is has a dependency on this system, and it was gross. So that's, I guess, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I think they're going to try thinking about this stuff in the future. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, for some reason, went through the effort of making a a demo using my clip, my my stupid MS Paint drawings. So. <laughs> so here's that, and this basically uses the the code from when we uh, what, what I made like what we saw in the slides um, with a few fixes like Collider 2D, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then when this dies, it just resets the level. Cool. Um, and um, yeah, and it just kind of does everything that you saw in the slides when you see all of these components, you can see that on, whoop, on the player over here. The box collider collapsed. Oh, okay. All right, oh yeah, let's go go to the programming uh, panel, the engineering panel. There'll have people, huh? I know, let's go. <laughs> Woo.
Oh, I had OBS running this whole time. 